Good? Yep. Mm. Yes. Mm. Are we starting now? Yes, yeah, so you can do the intro. Okay. Hey, guys. One of my good friends, Tim, has joined us. Uh, Tim works for Chris USA. I do. And uh, I've always wanted to, to do a video with you, man. We've been I mean, talking about it for so long. Tim and I have been playing Airsoft together for eight, eight years? years. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time. A long time. I've known him. That's longer than I've lived in California. When I started Jeez. playing Airsoft, he already had a team. And the team that I was trying out for was like the sister team of his team. And so, so we always rival had teams? this real... You weren't rival teams? You no, were... no. Like our teams like meshed. Like they were really, honestly, they became two halves of the same entity. What about the stories that you say where you two would like shoot each other and just go crazy on each other? I remember you told that story a long time ago, but you didn't reference who it was. Tim, Tim and I, oh no, that was Kennedy. That was you Kennedy. Remember, oh, oh, never yeah. mind. All right, all right, never mind. No, I thought it was Tim. Yeah, Richard. that was that was SWAT. <laughs> we don't. Uh, <laughs> Those that guys was, are cool. Yeah, it's just we used to unload on each other. Wasn't Hendrix from SWAT? That's, yeah, he that's was. the way Zipper Factory was, and all those other old school places. So. Mm -hmm. Zipper Factory was a little bit before my time, even though. But really? Yeah, but Matt and I first started playing back when. Uh, what is it called? Tech City, Tech City was used to be called Airsoft Playground. Playground. With the hay barrel, or with the yeah, hayside yeah. and city side. Hay yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, back oh, in the day. I hated that. Hey. That's when you had more. You had more difficulty keeping traction on hay that was on the <laughs> ground than on BBs. Uh, you would yeah. slide just because you just find yeah. like a big patch of hay. Or there'd be like a bunch of pallets, and people would like be running headlong and try to stop, and then the hay would like make them slip into the pallet, and they'd smack it and lay down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Good times. Yep. Uh, so as you are a guest, would you like to start us off with some questions, or would you like to give like a brief overview of what we're doing on this show? Oh, this is your show. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 we made some specific questions for you, okay. um, posted that. by our viewers, and they are now in here. Our other questions are in a secret hiding spot until next week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> secret hidey hole. Secret hidey hole. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, feel free to just go in and grab a question. Oh, did you it, want me to explain the whole Reddit thing? Well, yeah, okay, so the other so. thing that you did was you, you posted a, a short blurb on Reddit yeah. and asked people for questions, yeah. which so we've never done before. So that was an interesting Yeah, we've never test. done that before. We never well, use Reddit for that kind of stuff. But We'll see if it works out. You guys, we'll can, you guys can take that idea. I, I, just I, know, I think, I think we get too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a Reddit. I might do that. I might start taking Reddit. It'd be cool to right. bring the communities together. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see what happens, though. Obviously, we will not get all the we'll inaugural question all the from my friend Tim. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and fails it. Uh, who else? Russian is there? CQB uh, says, "Hey guys, would you would do you guys keep your AEG batteries charged while at games that don't have wall sockets to plug your battery chargers?" Oh, would slash do you guys keep your batteries charged while at games that do not have? I thought these were supposed to be themed questions. I'm not sure. That's okay. That's a good this question. That's still though. a good question. It's, it's, so basically, he's asking. Didn't rip it he's basically easier. asking like how you keep a battery charged if you don't have the ability to charge them in a field. Well, some chargers have those car battery. Yeah, the car battery ones. I haven't seen those in a while though. Not that I've, we've ever seen somebody pop their car hood and like jump yeah, off yeah. of their. Really? Well, yeah. Remember when, you remember when like yeah. uh, like when Elsie used to be at a Hesperia, for example? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. True. They would use. I mean, that was before generators were really used a lot by people, you know, yeah. for camping and stuff. So I really personally haven't had an issue with that though, because normally I have a plethora of batteries. There you go. That's the solution. Already <laughs> charged, and so that's usually the easiest way is to have like two or three batteries per gun. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Problem solved. But chargers do have those car things where it'll take juice. Plus, having extra batteries is nice because if you have one fail or have a mishap, mm -hmm. now you're not scrambling to try to find a battery to borrow from somebody. So it's nice to have backups. Which is always awkward. Yeah. All right, cool. We will continue this. All right. We have Derp Softer 15. What is your favorite type of sling, one-point or two-point sling? Uh, I'm a one-point guy. Sometimes two point guy. I don't know. What about you? I think it depends on the gun model you have, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I think I started off using a three point sling when I first started playing because I had a TMS R16. So it's a relatively long gun. Yeah, it's funny. It was my first airsoft gun. Oh, really? And yeah. then you made it shorter? No. Oh. No. Well, no. I, I cut <laughs> Oliver's. Of course, he's like, I ripped Oliver it off borrowed it to, and never to get borrow back to a, uh, a mag release, uh -huh. a magwell release, and then I never got the gun back. Uh -huh. Okay, well, my TMSR-16 <laughs> is really not story. an SR-16 anymore. But as the gun got shorter, I switched from a three-point sling to a one-point sling just because it was easier to maneuver around and stuff like that. But it depends on the gun, depends on your circumstances. I guess. What do you use when you go to the range? For my real guns? I actually don't have any sling points on my real guns. Really? I, I don't do that tactical stuff. I just kind of go and mm -hmm. plink, 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 and 
Yeah, but <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Okay, I'm good. Here's it's on your table. Uh, well, I, was, I use or, an MS2. Even though the MS3 has come out, it's no, really use nice. The sling. MS2. Really? Yeah, I remember I broke one. Oh, right. Well, I have an MS2, <laughs> and I like it because I can go from a one point up to a two point, do which you, I never do. do, do that? I was but say. I leave it as a one point. It is, yeah. No, the MS2 is metal versus the MS3 Polycarb. polymer, and we discovered at Ironclad at during the damn mission that. Wrestling and tussling and using a sling don't work well, so I broke mine. That's how you broke it? Yeah. Luckily, they make somewhat replacement parts, so I was able to fix it, but still. I have an old MS-1 sling that still works, kind of. Well, if it's metal, it'll still work. Yeah. I haven't had any issues. All right. Well, let's see if we can get a... Hmm. Oh, okay. So this is our first one from our from our Reddit test. Okay. <clears throat> Slayer117JRP asks, Would you rather fight one horse-sized... Horse... Sized Chris Costa or 100 duck sized Chris Costas. You each get one weapon of your choice. This is a fight to the death, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so would I you knew the red, it would be a good idea. Okay, so <laughs> one horse sized Chris as, Costa. As long as there's no swearing, I'm cool with it. Right. <laughs> you each get one weapon of your choice. Well, if I'm being literal with your question, I would rather fight 100 duck sized Chris Costas. And we would each get one weapon, and that one weapon would have to be used by all 100 duck-sized Chris Costas. Oh. And I'm hoping, because of their size, that they would be unable to pull the trigger on said weapon. So you're getting really technical. I'm saying, like, if he's going to be does. literal, this, this is what Matt does. I would rather fight a bunch of midget Chris Costas. So guess, <laughs> the next question would be, what, what weapon would you choose for the both of you and the 100 ducks? <laughs> well, we both get one weapon of our choice. I don't know what he would choose, but I would choose a minigun. He would because if I had a hundred, totally took my answer. I'm sorry. If I had a hundred ducks, all right, that's I'm... all right. I'll switch this up. Go ahead, go ahead. No, they're not a hundred ducks. They're Chris Costa. They're just small. Yeah, they're just tiny. Yeah, duck-sized Chris I mean, Costa. a duck-sized Chris Costa is not going to have the, the. Does that mean the... he gets like a oh, minigun, like a, oh, like a no, mini minigun? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the minigun would be so big. There's no way they can. Right, but no. Even if if it was one choice for each of us. I don't know if that they make a duck-sized weapon, so he'd be limited to real-sized weapons. <laughs> in which, unless you're using those like GI Joe plastic missile firing weapons, in which, in which case, case I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. about you? Totally a fair fight. Shoot, I actually <laughs> saw this one ahead of time, and your answer is way better than mine. I I, I chose a hundred duck-sized Chris Costas too. I was assuming they would each have their own weapon. Oh, okay. And being that it's Chris Costa, he's probably going to have his AR, you <laughs> okay. know, and his Full salient <laughs> and his salient gun. <laughs> In which case, I would definitely want the mech thing from Day After Tomorrow to shoot. At. <laughs> <laughs> what future weapons are allowed to? Okay, what? yeah, yeah. How are we going to get duck sized yeah, Chris okay. Costa true, anyway? True, true. Okay. Huh? The Edge of Tomorrow, that's okay, right. Okay, first of all, that did go by multiple names, though, so Tim could did be it? right. Yeah, remember they changed the name. Well, he said Day After Tomorrow. Remember, it was, oh, the, first it was after, Live, Die, the, Repeat. Day After and Tomorrow then it was, was that movie with, um... The weather. Yeah. No, never mind. Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, <laughs> and he's on the cruise ship getting chased <laughs> by Thank you, Roger. Definitely, that's the movie that I want, because I don't think they had mechs in the edge of Day After Tomorrow. But yeah, I think if I had that, I would definitely have the I think advantage. you two just totally ruined my answer. I have no answer now. I'm trying to think of it. I can't... <laughs> the mech is a pretty good one. I mean, you could go... I was going to say, like, a flamethrower. and not an AA-12? No, no, no. I was thinking a flamethrower, because I was thought, like, I thought ducks... And ducks are good, but you know, then roasted I really don't want. Duck. Yeah, roasted ducks. No, they're not ducks, though. They're yeah, Chris no, they're, they're mini Chris Costas. I don't think that would taste very good. <clears throat> mm -mm. If, <laughs> let's say, for example, that you chose the horse sized Chris Costa and you both had to choose the same weapon, right? Um, if, you, if you both used a sniper rifle, you're presented with a horse sized target as opposed to a man sized target, so that may also give you the advantage because it'd be easier to hit him. That would be a good idea, but you also have to think maybe, like, Actually, that is one reason why I chose the 100 duck size, because I thought it would be a target-rich environment. Be yeah. <laughs> it Especially doesn't matter. I think, I, think the mech, I think the <coughs> mech would work really well in that situation, so I'll just give up on my answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. You want to pull another one? Is it my turn again? That was a good question. Though. That was a that great question. If, if Reddit is, is producing these kind of questions, we might have we to need to do there. more <laughs> Reddit. Dig into it. Okay, I didn't rip this one. All right, William Ingraham. Ingram. In Graham. It's okay, we screwed up the questions all over that. What's up, time. insert? What is your opinion of wide bore barrels? I've heard only great things about them, but apparently they require hefty amounts of pressure, something that only a powerful gas rifle could push out. Would you think of running one in an AEG with upgraded internals such as a spring, piston, etc.? Correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that it's really hard to run a wide bore barrel on an AEG. That's what he was saying. Is yes. like, would you. 
think I'm of running. Pretty one. sure that they are really only good for HPA and that's gas the only, back guns. That's the only application I've seen. Because them. they're the only guns capable of pushing the amount of pressure that you need to take advantage of the wide bore. I'm not super hip on the science of the wide bore. I know that the idea is that it just kind of rides along the top of the. Yeah. I don't know how has that actually like, been scientifically proven. I don't know. I just throw a Prometheus barrel down <laughs> and it works. I, I treated it like like the whole KM hop twist. Like mm -hmm. they tell you that it does a certain thing and that it works. And as long as that I see proof progress, yeah, or yeah. like or like as long as I have a physical, you know, a tactile like oh okay it mm -hmm. works, then I don't really care how exactly it's achieving yeah. it. But same as you guys, I've only ever heard of people using the HPA setup. So uh, with with the huge amount of Tight bore, yeah. even 6.03 and 6.01 barrels for AEGs. Why reinvent the wheel or the barrel if it works? Right. Plus, plus CQB is awesome, and and you don't need a tight bore or a wide bore barrel. A good <laughs> hop up and hop up bucking are going to be far more beneficial to you than a wide bore barrel. Well, I think it's you have to use the barrel in combination with your hop and your bucking and your BBs and stuff like that. And I don't have any personal experience with a wide bore barrel except. Our mutual friend Josh. Oh, <coughs> he used um, a wide board? He used I forget. There was there was some game where he did have an HPA gun with a hop up or with a with like an R hop so wide board like barrel. Yeah. It there. was a polar star and he was saying that he was able to tag us from way far away. And so again, I don't have any personal experience, that's what Josh is telling me. I have no reason to disbelieve him. But uh, yeah, I mean, shoot, if it works. I mean, if yeah, if, if I was going to use one, it would be in a polar star for sure. Because I think so. Yeah, I think that's just, just the need most the extra reliable. air. There you go. We've nailed that coffin shut. George, I see this is a Reddit question, so I'm just going to pick it. But I think this is two. Whoa, whoa. That's just uh, a really long. Wait, what? I think we printed on both sides of the thing, maybe. Whichever one you think is more fun. <laughs> it's just <answer> that. <laughs> All right. I think it was intended to be the longer one though. Hold on. So, uh, let's see here. Or we can answer both, who cares? Uh, the first ones we kind of have other I know we have other questions like the like the one on the bag mm -hmm. in here. So, I'm, I'm going to see. I'm going to read this one really quick before I decide since I have the option to. Okay. <sighs> okay, this and is we'll a Crytek specific specific question, so we'll go with this one. Okay. This is from Dangerous Dangerous the Me, Thy Me. Uh, hey, glad to see you back. Hey, I'll just throw out some stuff uh, on the top of my head. I like how Crytek has come out with the gate, come out of the gate with solid designs, and I really felt that they were um, what airsofters want in terms of upgrades. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, he's referencing the MOSFET, mm -hmm. um, but seems like some others didn't make the cut. Do you think that we will ever see uh, things like R hop stop coming standard from the factory? Um, but actually, the most important question is, what is your favorite generation M, and uh, why is it the E92? What? There you go. Why, why do like, I, I've got all these Arizona questions, and then also I was BMW. I to happen. I'm just going to walk off the show right now. I already at the... No, no, no. You can say it. We'll, <laughs> no, no, this we'll, is good. we'll answer the first one first. <laughs> oh, okay. So the, the factory installed R hop. Uh, there are no plans to do that for our guns, and from what I understand, the R hop installation is a pretty involved process. With you have cutting. to file it down. Like exactly. I filed mine down, and, and I never even filed it down correctly, and then yeah. it just sat in a barrel and never got used. Especially, so. I think you have to do it that way because each barrel is different, yes. and each you know round that you're each like whatever weight you're going for is going to affect how yeah. there's how no you're, drop in. Right. I mean, you could theoretically make it as a drop in mm -hmm. for a specific barrel, but you have to use that consistent barrel spec across the board. And well, it just seems like a process is generally left for the end user that, the that wants that yeah. and then they can tune it to their specifications. So offering something like that from the factory might might be something we do in the future. Who knows? It's not really on the books right now, but you know, there's definitely some new features <clears throat> that will be coming at twenty fifteen that you guys will see at Shot Show. Oh okay. what? Yeah. News to me. At least there'll be new stuff at Chacho. I do like how you guys <laughs> actually actually uh, survey air softers though and mm -hmm. and actually lend an ear to what players are looking for and that's something that i yeah. don't think has been done well we have as, a lot, to, a, to as, as great as an extent as you guys there's have. a lot of players that work in our office and so we kind of plugged in with the community we play you know and so we get the feedback on the field and online and stuff like that so i mean it's not hard to find the answers and we are one of the few i think maybe the only one i'm not sure but you know we have an office here and you know we're directly connected to our manufacturing and so it's it's a it's a very involved process, and you know it really helps that we're right in the middle of it in Southern California. Okay. Now for the more important half of that question. 
<laughs> do you want to go first? No, no. They asked you specifically. They asked. I thought, you the, I thought the questions were for all of us. Though. Oh, okay. So, George, what's your favorite? George, what's your favorite BMW, your favorite BMW <laughs> I drive M3? A Ford Escape. Uh, it's not even mine. It's my wife's. I don't have a car anymore. I sold it to my parents, or gave it back to my parents. So his favorite M3 is the Ford Mustang. Yeah, okay. my, <laughs> which I'd love to Rear buy a new drive. 2015 Mustang, but my wife said no. Oh, okay, yeah. the right. new Mustang actually looks really cool. Yeah, I know. I actually, I just went to the LA Auto Show and. Um, not Ford, but that, that it's a dealership that's now making their own yeah. Mustang. It's like a super <clears throat> Mustang. They've been doing it's that for a while. Like, I mean, that's... Uh, I don't remember the uh, name. I it's probably a shame, should've... too. It's just, yeah. I could get it, but I wouldn't, it would have to be an automatic, she said, and it's just not really worth it to me at that Can't point. Even... And it's just going to sit in my garage anyway, so, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can't do that to oh, that well. car. Okay, oh, Tim. Well. My favorite M. Uh, Wait, is I it favorite M or M3? What does it say? I think maybe it's M3. No, it's what your favorite. Oh, what your says favorite M. Yeah, what your favorite M is. Oh, dang. Well, now I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> if we spend 20 minutes talking about okay, BMWs, okay. I'm going to cut it down. All right, we'll go <laughs> fast. Okay, I like the E36 M3, I think, because that's the car I learned to drive on. So I'll always be able to drive that one really well. Um, and, and we both have one. Yeah, with this. Actually, the reason I bought my E36 M3 was because of Tim. Tim actually went with me to buy my E36 M3. I did the that. internet I did just that. exploded with all this knowledge that you're <laughs> smacking down right now. But favorite M overall? Uh, I don't know. It might have to be the E39 M5. You can't take my also. Or the E30. Okay. One of the two. I don't know. E30 M3. One of the two. I'm not a fan of the E30 M3. I just, a whole bunch of people are really angry right now. Seriously, I'm sorry. I'm really angry at you. Not a fan. Like, I, I'm sure it has a pedigree. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it's That's fantastic. the reason why it's... I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, mine would have to be the E39 M5. Oh, well. The E34 M5 is also very nice. You could, there can only be one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite, favorite M would be the E39 M5. Still one of the best engines BMW's ever made. Still one of the best drive lines ever made. Um, it's a fantastic car that's adult when you want it to be and fun when you want it to be. It still gets mad respect from people with supercars. They're like, oh, is that an M5? <laughs> <laughs> you know, All right, next you question. Good? <laughs> you <Yeah>. good? <laughs> okay. uh, watch I knew it was going to happen. Question. I knew it was going to happen, but okay. it's, it's okay. Uh, Tyler Romano asks, hey, insert, what fictional movie gun would you like to see made into an airsoft gun? <clears throat> mm, fictional movie gun. Man, admittedly, I haven't seen... A lot of movies. See, recently. the problem is, like, I, I don't know about you, but working in like in the gun industry or airsoft industry, and now when you go to sci-fi movies and stuff, you're like, oh, they mm -hmm. built that off Atari of 21. Oh, yeah. Or hey, look, they're wearing Opscore yeah, helmets actually, with little yeah, lights yeah. on them, like you know, like the new you Hunger know, Games. I want to see rifle that was in the new Transformers that all those guys were using. This guy. <laughs> I was like, what? A salient? Are like... you referring to our, our salient? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, no. That mm, was joking. Yeah, the well. troll is real. <laughs> <laughs> the troll is real. Uh... I'm sure it already exists, but I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I remember watching Equilibrium uh, and watching like all their gun kata stuff uh -huh. and the pistols that they used. And I, if I went back and like watched the movie, I'm sure I could pick out what model it is now. But nines. was it? Yeah, with like a front end that yeah, was different. Yeah, I think it was an M9 with some front compensator stabby thingy. Yeah, I liked that and, just because yeah. Equilibrium was very influential to me. That's how I play airsoft. <laughs> I surround myself with people. It's just like... Uh. Just spin around yeah. kick people in the head. And then Sean Bean's off in the background going, hmm, I'm crooked, but you don't know it. <laughs> Sean Bean's not a threat. He, he'll die at the end. Or before the end. <laughs> so now we're bringing... Uh, oh, okay, this is really going off topic now. What about you? Oh, oh, shoot. I don't know. The most recent movie I saw was John Wick, but all those movies, all the guns were real because it was yeah. not, not really... A sci-fi movie. Was it sci-fi specifically? Yeah, yeah. It just said a few. Oh. It said a, a fictional, fictional movie. Fictional yeah. movie. Yes, a lot of movies. Most movies are fictional. Yeah, even a fiction. There can be a fictional modern time yeah. or historical fiction. Fiction. Yeah. So shoot, I don't know. If you have one already, then go for it. Uh, I might need I'm to gonna go with like one of the only few I could think of because, like I said, I now see movies and I get I like, oh, that's just the Tar Twenty One that they mm -hmm. did this, or like, you know, everything is just tweaked in my mind now. But uh, I would say the gun from Starship Troopers. Okay. Uh, I'm actually, I know there's some people out there who make real ones for, you know, like real guns. But mm -hmm. I think that'd be kind of cool for Airsoft. Mm -hmm. Kind of over the top. We have the pulse rifle already. Oh, <clears throat> what about a 40K Bolter? That'd be cool as an Airsoft gun. 
What is that? Oh, that's Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Like the uh, Space Marines use that bolter. That'd be kind of oh, yeah, yeah. kind of neat. Yeah. Although it'd be huge. It'd be cool. Whatever. Any kind of it? Space Marine gun would work though, like <coughs> Star Trek. Yes, Star Starcraft. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Judge Dredd. Oh yeah. 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 With multiple, multiple different, like you yell at it, you're just like, mmm, high, <laughs> high explosive, and then a BB comes out <laughs> and popcorns. Whatever. Anyway, who wants to pull a nice question? Uh, Is it my turn? Yes. I think it's your turn. Is it my turn? Okay. Yeah, we keep going <laughs> this way, uh, it's clockwise. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh no. It's another dually. Uh, Hong Fu asks. Could you elaborate on the history? Okay, so I, I mentioned in the Reddit thread that you and I had been friends for a while, and also uh, Shades is a good friend of ours as well. And so he says, could you elaborate on your history with Matt and Shades? When and why did you change your hairstyle? Oh, by Hong Fu. Because he's an adult. He changed his Or oh, Hong Fu. I don't know. Um, so more importantly, why did you change your hairstyle? Okay, so I used to... I used to really not do my hair. Like, if you knew me in high school, like, I just shaved it, buzzed it. and Yeah, I just left it alone and not did anything with it. And then I think I was slicking it back for a while. But the thing that kind of got me to, like, part my hair was Mad Men. Yeah, Mad Men got Really me. cool show. My and I also favorite. was watching at the time, um, a couple years ago, that documentary about the, uh, uh, the, the, the Lakers channel. So the Lakers have their own... Anyway, I'm a big basketball fan, okay, but yeah. Pat Riley was a Lakers oh, coach in the man. '80s during Showtime era, and you know, one of they did like a special on him, and like Pat Riley like always looks sharp, like on the sidelines, and I was like, dude, Pat Riley, his hair looks awesome. And then Don Draper, I was like, man, I'm gonna start parting my hair. So it was very <laughs> much uh, influenced by what I saw. On and TV. then it started becoming modern again. I have yeah. a, I have my hair parted. My wife says I have to do it. So. What are you talking about, guys? I have a buzz cut. Your hair's kind of moved. Yeah, actually, over. your hair's kind of messy today. It's <laughs> usually better. I'm kind of disappointed. Happened. And your sorry. beard kind of looks kind of weird today, too. No offense. It's because I wasn't shaving for November. and then. I yeah, got... I wasn't shaving in November, too, but I still shaved this morning for the show. <sighs> I, uh, I don't... don't know what happened. <clears throat> I can't do that, man. I'm like, my Chinese side is too much up here, so I can't um, grow a beard. So then what was the other question? History uh, behind history shades. Behind oh, uh, well, I think we already kind of talked about it. We started our softening a while ago, but I think the first time I met Shades was at Lion Claws a couple of years ago, and I saw his Corrado. And so, oh, again, man. it goes back to cars. It must have been a long time ago, then. It was quite a few years ago, yeah. Are you sure it was LC? No, it doesn't matter. It's probably think, one of the Lion yeah, Claws Yeah, it, was, it was one of the events where he drove, and I saw his Corrado, and I was like, dude, you drive a Corrado. That's awesome, because those cars are not very popular. They're not very common. No, they're and then not friendship at all. with Forge. Yes. The motorsports bond. Yeah. See, cars and airsoft. That's kind of Actually, weird. if you want to make friends with Matt or probably Tim is the same way, you just got to talk, start talking about cars and they'll immediately be friends with you. Or specific airsoft. kind of cars. Yeah, specific though. kind of cars. It's preferably German. Yeah. Um, you know. I don't want to hear about your miles per gallon you're getting in your Prius. That's just not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how fast your GTR is, it's still a Nissan. Not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to what about, what about What about Matt's Subaru? I like Subarus. The other man? Oh. I like Matt. Oh, oh, you, like you still give him crap, though, for it. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's the fun thing about yeah, being yeah. car guys. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Go for it. There's a bunch of people looking up the Corrado now, like, what is that? Okay, this <laughs> is by multiple people asked this question uh -huh. in various ways. Will there ever be an AEG Chris Vector? There probably will be an AEG Chris Vector. Really? One of these days. Interesting. Yeah. It's definitely, to... it's definitely inside the realm of possibilities. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Good answer. Good answer. I totally knew that. <laughs> I mean, you think about it. How many guns could, you know, would Chris Group be interested in, in making but in our making. own, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, why should we do Funny that you would ask all the time? Chris Tim that question yeah. about a Chris hmm. gun. Strange. But yeah, it's definitely <laughs> definitely within the realm of possibilities. All right, go ahead, Matt. I think well, this, will be one of our, this will probably be our last question. We'll see. Okay. We're kind of getting... Yeah, we sadly don't have this show going. Uh, also, a great question. I was personally wondering this. I think I asked you this mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Thomas Rogers asked, "Hey, insert and guest Tim, mm -hmm. is there ever going to be an airsoft version of the Sphinx?" That one is also possible. However, gas systems aren't really on the on the roadmap just yet. Okay. And so there's definitely there's there's a lot of stuff we can do. I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about. You know, working at Chris as an actual firearms company. Again, that's our, our product, you know, in, in real life. Could you not just put, like, a really, really low-grain amount in a bullet and then just put a BB in it? No. 
That's a horrible no. idea. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, 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 that's a bittersweet answer because I really want a Sphinx as an airsoft pistol. Mm-hmm. And I know one day that may be a possibility, but not any time in the next two years. I can't say. Who knows no. what's going to happen in the next couple of years. But, um, yeah, I mean, on AGs cool. right now in terms yeah. of the Crytek line. As far as airsoft goes, yeah. But if you want a real Sphinx, you know, I might be able to arrange for something well, like that. that. Unless you live in California, <laughs> by the time you watch this video, you're pretty much on You have a time. week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when this comes out, you have a week. Uh, yeah. If you're in California, anyway. Uh, yeah. Can we do one more? Can we just finish yeah, it off yeah, with one ahead. more? Yeah, you can do one Do you want more. me to do it? Yeah, okay, please. Close us out here. We, we just can't have the show go on for two hours. Well, I just figured we had a lot of... Why did we leave the little we paper basket in there? Because I, I like know. the basket. You like the little paper yeah, the basket, basket that we cool. made? Well, okay. Uh, Reddit question. Yeah, it is a Reddit question. Petero Torres. Tero Torres, with a P in front. Uh, how is it... Oh, this is actually just for me. Uh, how is it working for a firearms company? I always wanted to know how to get into that field. Thanks for doing this AMA. Um, well, working for a firearms company is really cool. Uh, it's been a... I always felt like it was a natural progression because when I started airsofting, it kind of got me into real guns. Really? So it wasn't the opposite? No, no, no. Because I started airsofting when I was really young, but then when I turned 18, I built my first AR, and then, you know, kind of things took off from there. Um, And so, you know, transitioning from an airsoft company into a real company that also is subsequently doing airsoft also (laughs) uh, has been kind of an interesting interesting ride, but it's definitely, uh, it, it changes your perspective of firearms and, and airsoft guns and stuff like that and it's been a really cool learning experience when you started out airsofting were your parents pro like did they like you said you started out airsofting mm-hmm. so i assume like i i grew up completely different like i was mm-hmm. shooting real guns since i was like yeah yay big yeah so were your parents like that or was it like more taboo kind of like mm. you know since he was knee high to a duck-sized chris costa my parents well I, it was kind of split i don't think my mom really cared too much my dad's not really a huge gun guy but he, you know, at the same time, it didn't impede me from doing it. So I have, I've had guns all over the, all over the house, and mm. BBs all over the house ever <laughs> since I was young. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't really a problem. And obviously, after I became an adult, it didn't really, it wasn't really an issue. As long as you store them properly, you know, yeah. general, general safety stuff. My parents didn't have any problems with it. Yeah. In terms of transitioning from from doing airsoft into a, into a, a real firearms career, mm-hmm. his other question was, you know, how do you get a job in that industry? You mean you and I do? We did a lot. Uh-huh. Of, this, of the same things in terms of the airsoft community. And mm-hmm. then I know from talking to you that your your transition into the, the real firearms industry was was made easier because of your knowledge of, of different models of guns and, and yeah. more and primarily your experience with, with marketing. Mm-hmm. And and that was how you were able to find a, a, a calling, a niche, if you will, yeah. a place in the firearms industry. So if, if you were going to give a suggestion to somebody who was looking at working in the firearms industry, would you suggest mm-hmm. they take take a, a marketing approach or become well, familiar with products and then start working for like a gun retailer and work their way up that way? Or well, not everyone's going to have the same forte, I guess. Um, they, this is actually pretty general advice for any industry. You know, it's kind of like what you know and then who you know. Um, and so that that is actually how I kind of got um, and a little bit of luck. Got pulled. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's there's another part of that that rhymes, <laughs> but. I'll, t- I'll tell you guys that off camera. But anyway, um, you know, you have to have a knowledge base yourself. You have to present some value to whomever is going to be employing you. you know, regardless of industry. Yeah, regardless of industry. And so as long as you can bring something to the table, and if you know the right people that can put you in the right spot, then that'll, you know, it'll get your foot in the door. And Well, actually, I think that, you know, your, the, the value that you put in yourself, whether it be education or experience or what have you, is what, you know, is going to get your foot in the door. And then you got to be able to follow through and deliver on on those points, and so I don't know if I can give you like a roadmap specifically to get into that would the firearms. Like really industry. hard to to almost because of how you started. Mm-hmm. Of, you know how I mean, all of us have started in different. Yeah. Come to airsoft differently. Yeah. I mean, I moved to LA for the video game industry, and mm-hmm. I not I don't do that anymore. And mm-hmm. you were trying to do. I'm I'm an actor. I'm yeah, you were you know, doing and, acting. And so then, that kind of so everybody's kind of like found their own way to get into airsoft, yeah. and then airsoft is a platform to get where you where you are now. Well, yeah, to a degree. To to kind of build on that though, networking is such an important yeah, part. Yeah, networking is important. And airsoft is really cool because you meet so many different types of people playing mm-hmm. airsoft. So. Well, I mean, gun the gun, yeah. you know, and then same thing with with. Um, Real firearms as mm-hmm. well. I mean, I made a lot of connections just from shooting with other people as yeah. well, too. So. Yeah, exactly. The whole community aspect is really important. Mm-hmm. Make friends. Be very personable. Mm-hmm. That, too. 
No. So, not only was this, a, I think, a funny episode, but also very educational. Uh, <laughs> get career, dude, like, get, learned, get I, career I learned, advice. I learned bro. a couple of things here today as well. I need to start working on my career. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Same, right? Uh, well, Tim, thanks for coming by, man. Thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun. We'll have to do this again sometime. I think we will. I want to. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Well, hopefully you guys will tune in next week to another insert. We'll go back to our regularly scheduled program. So any future questions you have for an upcoming episode for George and I and maybe a guest, go ahead and insert those in the comments section down below, and those will get put in our helm of reasoning for our next episode of the Not So Round Table. See you guys later. <laughs> <Walk>. <laughs>